Are you frustrated with your debt and you feel like you're stuck in this rut? Today, we're going to see how you can negotiate with your creditors to lessen the stress on you and get you closer to your debt-free goals. Welcome to Simplify and Enjoy, the podcast and community focused on helping families have less stress and more options through minimalism and financial independence. I'm your host, El Martinez. This podcast is sponsored by Coastal Credit Union. Coastal's mission is to help you live a better life by offering you a better way to bank. Find out how at bankbetter.org. Usually when people make money goals for the year, paying off debt is in the top three. But many struggle to achieve that goal. Depending on where the pandemic caught you on your financial journey, you may have had an extra struggle. Perhaps a drop in income meant slowing down or even pausing your debt payoff plan. That can be a real and huge burden because those balances are lingering or worse, growing. If it makes you feel any better, you're not alone. Debt is weighing down on a lot of families. According to Experian, 90% of adults in the U.S. have at least one credit card on their report. And of those, 75% carry a balance month to month. The average balance for that group is over $5,000. The average balance on a car loan is $19,700. And then you have student loans. In 2020, the average balance was $38,000. While there is some relief for federal loans with the pause in payments, If you have private loans, you're still dealing with them on top of everything. Hopefully things have improved and stabilized, but now you're at the point where you're trying to figure out how to jump back in, which debts to tackle first, and what payment plan makes the most sense for you. Which is why I'm happy to have attorney Taylor Kosla be a part of this episode. Taylor is a partner at Agris Law Firm a team that's focused on helping people deal with debt collection. In this episode, we're going to look at ways to negotiate with your creditors, protections available to you through the Fair Debt Collections Act, and a possible opportunity for you to have an attorney assist you without you paying out of pocket. Are you ready? Let's get started. Let's start off with a best case scenario. Your finances have stabilized and you're now ready to get back into your debt-free plan. Perhaps you've kept payments, but it was the minimum or maybe a little less than that, so the balance has grown, or you've had to pause your payments while taking care of more essential bills. So now you're ready to get back into the swing of things, but you're wondering, how can you approach this? Attorney Taylor Kosla walked me through a few key steps with negotiation that you can use to work with your debts and make them more manageable. The first is be proactive and reach out. You have to resist that instinct of avoiding and ignoring calls, which is difficult, especially if you were dealing with financially tough times. Something that you want to consider, though, is that because so many people have been financially affected by the pandemic, creditors may be more eager to work with you than you expect. I'd like to start off by saying the biggest advice I give to our clients and just about everyone I meet is if you have debt, don't ignore it. Based on my experience, debt collectors, creditors, they'd rather get something rather than nothing. The second point is verify the debt. Before you send any money over, verify the numbers. This could be a situation where your original debt has been sold to another company. Sometimes they don't have correct information on the accounts. So you want to make sure that that balance is accurate. People that have debt, especially post-COVID, they're getting hit with, they're behind on auto bills, credit card bills, medical bills, especially with COVID. It can be an overwhelming experience. So you'll, you'll want to negotiate the debts down, but you also want to be well-informed of what your debts are. What are the balances? What amounts are due? How old is this debt? I think now is a time because the debt collection industry is booming that collectors are probably going to try and sneak in some of those old debts. If you make a payment 
on an old debt that'll actually revive the statute of limitations. Really? So do your homework, know what mm-hmm. the accounts are, and you can ask a collector, I want you to verify this account for me, and they should send you documentation showing what they're collecting on when the account was open when it was charged off, what are the balances and what fees or interest has been incurred ever since. Third, run the numbers yourself. When you're working with creditors and debt collectors, they're going to try to get you to commit to a higher payment. That's their job. But you're the one that has to live with this. So go through your budget and work out the numbers beforehand. You should consider both what you can afford on a monthly basis And as Taylor points out, a one-time payment to settle it. You should negotiate your debt. Um, And you need to be honest with the collector. Collection agencies get more upset if you commit to something that you can't maintain. So be reasonable. I think 99.99% of consumers with debt, they want to pay it off. Oftentimes, either with a payment plan or a lump sum payment, Debt collectors and creditors really like a lump sum payment. They're oftentimes willing to shave off a decent amount of balance to get that money in their pocket. Because the longer that debt sits out there, the longer that you wait to start making payments to get that resolved, the more fees and interest are getting tacked on it. That balance just keeps going up and up, and it's going to be a lot harder for you to dig out of that hole. If you are able to come to an agreement, make sure that you have it in writing. You want the terms to be clear and to make sure that they honor that agreement. Now, if they aren't willing to work with you on a sustainable payment plan, you do have a few more options. You can work through your own debt payoff plan, whether it's using a method like the debt snowball, avalanche, or lasso. I have entire episodes that walk you through the details and one this year about how to find the best solution for your situation. Another route that you may want to take is consolidating and refinancing your debts. Some families have found it to be a very helpful option because they can take multiple high-interest loans and merge it into one that's at a lower, more manageable rate. If you're happy with your current bank or credit union, reach out to them first see what they have to offer, but then also shop around. You want to make sure that you're getting a competitive rate. If you are a member of Coastal Credit Union here in the Triangle area, I'm going to include a link in the show notes to make it easier for you to find that page and reach out to them. Hopefully, you can take this information and use it to come up with a payment plan that you feel comfortable with. But if you're dealing with an aggressive debt collector, that's beginning to harass you. We're going to go over some ways that you can protect yourself and what rights you have. Debt can not only financially squeeze people, but when the collectors start harassing you, it can be emotionally stressful as well. In some cases, it crosses a line and becomes abusive. That's where the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act comes in. The purpose of the FDCPA is to help give you some protections and limit abusive debt collectors. Your credit cards, medical debts, and consumer debts like your mortgage or car loans are covered under this. We'll get into how it can protect you from creditors that are harassing you, but it can also help you with your credit report. A good way to keep track of your accounts and what's going on with your credit is Regular check your credit report. By federal law, you're entitled to a free copy of your credit report every 12 months. I recommend going to annualcreditreport.com and go through that report line by line to see if there's something inaccurate, especially with medical debt. I see a lot of times consumers have health insurance that should have paid a bill or maybe the insurance company paid the hospital bill, but they didn't pay the physician's bill that was associated with the hospital. Those bills flip through the cracks, they end up on your credit report. Debt collectors are coming after you now for it. You want to keep ahead of that stuff by checking your credit report. My firm handles Fair Credit Reporting Act cases, which allows us to help consumers get an inaccurate information removed from their credit report. There's a dispute process Mm -hmm. to request a negative or inaccurate information be taken off your credit report. 
if the bureaus don't fix it after that, you can file suit. Now, here's where it can help you with a collector or creditor that is harassing you. Under the FDCPA, that collector can't contact you at unreasonable hours, either before 8 a.m. or after 9 p.m., unless you agree to it. They can't contact your work if you inform them they're not allowed to. And they can't contact you if you have already informed them that you hired an attorney. Plus, they can't discuss your debt with anyone except you, your spouse, or attorney. If you're thinking, okay, I'm in debt, I don't have money to hire an attorney, Taylor has some good news for you. One of the great things about that law and the debt collection is there's what's called a fee shift provision. Mm -hmm. So consumers don't actually have to pay my attorney's fee, the bureaus and the debt collectors do. On top of that, you're entitled to statutory damages, which are between zero and $1,000 and actual damages. If something was inaccurate on your credit and you were denied an auto loan, or maybe you got a higher interest rate on a loan, um, that actual money out of pocket as a result of the inaccuracy is something that you can claim under the statute. The Debt Collection Act, which is a protection for consumers being harassed by debt collectors, it also has a fee shift provision. That's great because, again, our clients can reach out to us and we can help them at no cost to them. They're entitled to statutory damage between zero and a thousand dollars. Actual damages for a debt collection case usually occurs when a debt collector is threatening to file suit or they're making these empty threats that they don't intend to take. That consumer then makes pays them five hundred dollars because they're afraid of getting sued. That's actual damages money that they spent based on the false representations made by the collector. These are just a few of the big provisions that this act has that can cover you when you're dealing with creditors that are harassing you. And if you want to learn more about the services that Taylor's firm offers, just go to agrislawfirm.com, which I'll include in the show notes. This segment is brought to you by Coastal Credit Union. If you want to live better, you got to bank better. Find out how at bankbetter.org. Before we wrap up, I want to share a few key takeaways I got from speaking with Taylor and preparing this episode. The first one is don't ignore your debts. I know when you see the balance grow or the payments that you're sending in not making a dent, You just want to avoid the situation. The better way to deal with it is to be more proactive. Reach out with your creditors and see if you can negotiate a payment plan that makes the most sense for you. Which leads to the second takeaway. Run the numbers yourself. They're going to push you to pay off as much as you can from their perspective. But only you know your whole situation with your finances. So run the numbers yourself and see what is a sustainable payment plan that you can make that will allow you to pay off that debt while still taking care of your other family financial goals. Finally, know your options. We spent a big portion of this episode talking about the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. Wow, that is a mouthful. But it does offer some wonderful protections when you're dealing with debt collectors that are harassing you, but you also have other options. Again, having a payment plan, negotiating with your creditors, looking at your local credit union or bank to see if you can consolidate and refinance your debts into something more manageable. These could be the good options that you need for your family. Sometimes it feels a bit lonely when you're dealing with debt. So if you would like to have some support as you're paying off your debts and would love to talk with other families who have been there or continuing their financial journey, please join us in our free Facebook group called Thriving Families. Just head over to simplifyandenjoy.com slash FB. We'd love to see you there. Special thanks to Taylor for being a part of this episode. If you're dealing with harassing debt collectors and would like some help, please reach out to Taylor over at agrislawfirm.com. As always, I'll have the resources we've mentioned 
plus some extras over in the show notes, including sample letters as you're working with your debt. Just head over to simplifyandenjoy.com. Today, we talked about one way that your finances may have shifted because of the pandemic, but that's not the only way things can change. Next week on the podcast, we're going to be talking about how you can bake in flexibility with your finances so when things do come up, you still have some options and opportunities to handle these shifts. So if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that episode. We're on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Our theme song was by Staircases with additional music from various artists over at Audio. Finally, and most importantly, thank you so much for your support. If you have a topic or question that you want covered in the podcast, please send that in. Become a VIP. Just go over to simplifyandenjoy.com slash join. No worries. It's free. I hope you have a wonderful week. Take care.